at the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you that um, 85% of Jesus' life, he was out of order. Eighty-five percent of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. For eighty-five percent of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. Eighty-five percent of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. But it did not line up with his divine DNA. For 85% of his life, when he's anointed, he's called, he's chosen, and he's wrong. Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh all praises, all honor, all glory. Be unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the name of our Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son. The Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit. As always, double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone that taught us this truth and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, one, peace, and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers who are hazarding your lives daily to push the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures to help utter, uh, edify uh, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom, one, peace, and love to you believers, you Akim, you Akwatim, and you children. All right, this lesson is going to be about, you know, a pastor named Jamal Bryant, which there's a video and it turns out that this video is from 2019. You know, I only uh, came to that conclusion by way of actually listening to the video. And he mentioned something about, you know, that some of the people in the congregation aren't ready to enter into 2020 or something along the lines of that. Not those very words verbatim, but it was something along the lines of that. However, all right, this, guy you know this christian so-called pastor which he's not a true pastor all right he's a false pastor all right just as well as uh marvin sap you know because he was speaking all right to the congregation of marvin sap at uh one of the churches i'm not for sure exactly which one it is if it's the one in grand rapids uh michigan or if it's the one in texas you know and i'm leaning more so towards the one in texas but however you know, he made a, a blasphemous statement, a very stupid and idiotic statement, all right, and shows that he's very uh, uh, low level when it comes down to the scriptures. And that's all Christians, you know, even the ones that esteem themselves to know something, they really don't know a damn thing, all right? You don't know nothing about the Bible. And every time you pick up the Bible to try to make a reference or to try to break down a scripture, you basically break it down wrong. All right. And you, you, you make a dumb, stupid, you know, parable all right, con concerning things in the world. All right. And try to compare it to things in the scriptures. You try to relate it to things in the scriptures and it don't add up. All right. It don't add up, you know. And um, um, let me see something. There's a, there's a scripture. Uh, the book of Proverbs 26 and 7, the legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. All right. It don't it don't measure up, man. All right. So you try to take scriptures and twist it, you know, and, and don't even truly understand it. Uh, now, basically, he goes to the book of Luke. All right. The third chapter and the 23rd verse. And it be, because it says that Yahweh's ministry started at uh, when he was 30. Basically saying that Yahweh Shai just jacked off, you know, 85% of his life. All right, that he was he was he was going off for 85% of his life, and then something triggered in him to start doing the right thing. All right. 
Uh, he also made a statement or a reference to Joseph not being the biological father of, of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh All right, that was his earthly father. All right, and when you read the scriptures in its true context, all right, then you have no choice but to understand these things. But really, it's up to the Heavenly Father to make you understand it or not. So, uh, I will put the video within the description box. And it starts really about the 22-minute mark. All right, the whole video, if you can stomach it, which I couldn't, I had to uh, skip through certain of it. All right, because you got that that comedy, that that Christian comedy, you know, when they try to elevate their voice and everybody's saying that's right and amen to shit that 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 doesn't even need an amen said to it. All right, and it's just irritating for the most part, man. You Christians are just irritating. All right, you're irritating, you know, and and you 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 basically you you get on you <laughs> on my nerves. All right, ultimately. All right, because you're just so simple. All right, you're so simple and you just accept anything and you, you're docile and you don't go back and research anything. All right, you don't even really get into the scriptures throughout this whole, uh, um, I want to say it's like 30 something minute long video. All right, there was only three scriptures brought out and every single scripture was, was out in the wrong context. Every last one of them was within the wrong context. So one scripture I want to start out with is 2 Ezra 4 and 37. It says, By measure have he measured the times, and by number have he numbered the times, and he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. So this is dealing with prophecy. This is dealing with the judgments of the Heavenly Father. All right? He has measured every single thing. All right? Everything happens according to its time. All right, even our, our Lord and Savior coming on the scene in his ministry beginning. All right, it was according to what the Heavenly Father set it up to, to happen. All right, the book of uh, Sirach 16 and 26. The works of the Lord, all right, what Lord? Yahweh, are done in judgment and from, the, and from the beginning. And from the time he made them, he disposed the parts thereof. So as soon as one measure is fulfilled, it's disposed. All right, and it's time to move on to the next. So when you go into prophecy, all right, it states around the time, you know, our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah would begin his ministry. When you go into the book of Daniel, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 20, 24, 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon the holy city to finish the transgressions and to make it an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. All right. So those 70 weeks is dealing with, you know, 490 years. Each week represents seven years. How do we know that? The book of Genesis, the 29th chapter, verse 26. And the bad said, I must not. Uh, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee uh, this also for the service which thou hast served with me yet seven other years. So the week represents seven years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife. See? So the week represents seven years. All right, so one week. It's seven years, so 70 weeks would add up to a total of 490 years, okay? So beginning at around the year 445, you know, or 454, all right, this is the timeline, all right, in which um, I'm going to grab something concerning Ezra's as well, because Ezra's received the same message, all right, so they knew around what time Yahweh Shah was going to come on the scene. All right, what time his ministry was going to begin. All right, they even knew what time he was going to be born. Because when you go into the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, it states, you know, uh, um, around the time, uh, it states where Yahweh Shah was going to be born, rather. All right, and this particular chapter that I'm reading, all right, it states when all right, he was going to come on the scene. So they had an estimate, they had an understanding of, of around what time. Yahweh Shah was going to be uh, on the scene. 
So this is Daniel 9 and 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, all right, in which um, the temple was burned down, you know, by the Edomites. All right, so during the time of Cyrus, during the time of Darius, all right, our people, all right, under the the the, the uh, instructions of the prophets, all right, Ezra, you know, uh, um, you can go and read about this in Nehemiah. All right, uh, Zerubbabel was on the scene. All right, uh, the high priest Joshua was on the scene. All right, uh, uh, Haggai was on the scene. All right, we're basically, you know, building the, the, the temple or rebuilding the temple in troublous times. All right, they had to uh, build the temple with their swords jerted upon them in the event that the enemies may attack them. So reading on is that it says that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score in two weeks, which adds up to a total of 483 years. The street shall be built again and the walls, even in troublous times, because the, our enemies, the heathens, didn't want us to build. Now, this is uh, verse 26. It says, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and until the end of the war, desolations are determined. So they knew, all right, uh, 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 what time our Lord and Savior was going to be on the scene. All right, according to this prophecy, well, some knew it at least. And then also this prophecy goes into the events that would take place from 66 through 73 AD. All right, with the destruction, you know, of the temple, you know, with the invasion of the, the children of Israel by the Romans. All right, it's all recorded within that brief account of history. So the 483 uh, years or the 490 years. All right, it gives an estimation of around the time that Yahweh was going to be on the scene. All right, which he was born. All right, and, and he didn't start his ministry until 30, but he died at 33. Or rather, he was murdered at 33. All right, so when you go into that prophecy, that prophecy is basically giving you a timeline around what time our Lord and Savior was, was going to come. The book of 2 Ezra, the 7th chapter, verse 28 for my son, Yahweh Shai, and then this prophecy actually calls Yahweh Shai by name. So Ezra knew what was going to be the name of our Lord and Savior, that his name was going to be Yahweh Shai. And my son, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed with those that be with him, which was the, uh, the disciples that became apostles, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. You know, because within that 400-year time span, they were waiting on the Messiah. They were waiting on Yahweh to come on the scene. It says, and, and after these years shall my son Mashiach, it also calls Yahweh the anointed. After these years shall my son Mashiach die and all men that have life because Yahweh was crucified. He was killed. All right. He was wounded for our transgressions. All right. All right. When you go back to uh, Daniel, the, 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 seven, the ninth chapter, verse 27, Okay, that's verse 26. It says, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Yeah, because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised because of our iniquities. See? So once again, it says, and after these years, my son Mashiach uh, die, shall my son Mashiach die and all men that have life in the world shall be turned into the old side in seven days, like as the former judgments, so that no man shall remain. So reading that, all right, that gives you a time frame around the time that Yahweh Shai was going to come. All right, so basically from the time that Ezra was on the scene, all right, 400 years into the future, Yahweh Shai would be on the scene. And likewise, from Daniel, all right, you would count 483 uh years all right into the future and Yahweh Shah will be on the scene okay 
So um, going from there to the book of John, the second chapter, and reading verse one, it says, in the third day, there was a marriage because now, you know, Yahweh Shai is on the scene. All right, he's he's uh, uh, approaching that particular age of 30 years of age, you know, if not so, 30 years of age. It says, in the third day, there was a marriage in, Ca in, in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Yahweh Shai was there. And both Yahweh Shai was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahweh Shai said unto him, they have no wine. Yahweh Shai said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. See? So everything is done according to time. All right, everything is done according to the measure. All right, now there was another reason why Yahweh Shai's ministry didn't start until, you know, he was 30 years old. All right, does not the scripture say that I will make thee a priest after the order of Melchizedek? All right, let's go to that within the book of Psalms. All right, and that should be Psalms 110. All right, and beginning at verse 4, Yahweh have sworn and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the, mo the order of Melchizedek. See? Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And I believe it says it somewhere in the Old Testament as well. All right, another time. Now, Luke, the third chapter, verse 23, and Yahweh Shah himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed, uh, um, as was the supposed son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. All right, which um, Joseph was not the son of Heli. All right, when you go into Matthew, the first chapter, it gives the accurate, all right, uh, uh, genealogy of Joseph. All right, all the way down to King David and, and, and beyond that. All right, the, the daughter of Heli was actually Mary. So Luke, the third chapter, verse 23, gives the genealogy of Mary. All right, uh, uh, father's side, Mary's father's side. Okay, going all the way back to King David and beyond that. So when you go uh, uh, into the scriptures, all right, because here it says, as was the supposed. In the NLT, it says that he was known as the son of Joseph, all right, which is more accurate. Okay, uh, to prove that he's the son of Joseph, all right, because... Your father is who determined your, your nationality. Uh, the book of Romans 1 and 3, it says, Concerning the son of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, Salakia, concerning his son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. All right, of course, when you go into this word seed, the word there is uh, G4690, which is sperma. Sperma is where the word sperm comes from. All right, B, a metaphor, an example, uh, a seed, an, an example, a few survivors res reserved as the germ of the next generation, just as the seed is kept from the harvest for the sowing. The semen, all right, the product of this semen, seed, children, offspring, progeny. All right, so what is, what is semen? All right, semen is, is, is what comes out of a man. All right, and it's sown into a woman and it produces offspring, which shows what? That David, I'm sorry, that uh, Joseph would have had to have a biological father. And his biological father, yeah, uh, Shai, would have had to have a biological father. And his bi biological father was Joseph. Luke 2 and 4, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he is of the house and lineage of David. See? So that's how Yahweh Shai was the son of David all right, by way of his father, Joseph. It was just the fact that Joseph and Mary coming together was a fulfillment of what the Holy Spirit said would happen. All right, when it, when it uh, uh, was upon the prophets, and it prophesied the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, don't get me wrong. Yahweh Shai is the son of the Heavenly Father, the spirit that's inside of him. 
All right, it is the spirit all right, uh, uh, of Yahweh Shai, the first begotten of the Heavenly Father. All right, he was the first born or first created spirit to ever live and exist. Now, going back to all right, Luke 3 and 23, all right, because it says that Yahweh Shai's ministry began at 30, all right, when he was 30 years of age. Now, however, the priest, all right, ministry, or they will be uh, be allowed to join the service of the ministry at 30 years of age. All right. Now at 25, they'll be able to work and do certain things within the tabernacle. All right. But however, at 30, that's when they were able to come to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden in the tabernacle of the congregation. So the fact that Yahweh Shai is considered a priest all right, not after the, the priesthood of Aaron, all right, and the Levites, but a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. It's just spiritual that his ministry would start at 30 years of age, the book of Number, Numbers, the fourth chapter, verse 46. And all those that were numbered of the Levites whom Moses and Aaron and the chief of Israel numbered after their families and after the house of their fathers from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, even a so like you, everyone that come to do service of the ministry and the service of the burden in the tabernacle of the congregation. So through the spirit, this is the reason why Yahweh Shai's ministry started at 30 years of age, because Yahweh Shai is a priest, not after the order of, of, of the Levites and after the order of Aaron, but ultimately after the order of Melchizedek. So Yahweh Shai through the Heavenly Father all right, came on the scene according to the appointed time that the Heavenly Father wanted him to come. And then also Yahweh Shai is considered a priest. All right, the book of Hebrews 7 and 10. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not uh, be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made in this a necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom things, these things, are spoken pertaining to another tribe of which a man gave attendance at the altar. And it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe, Selachia, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. See, so Yahweh Shai is a priest. And guess what? He has made us priests as well. All right. So through the spirit, there's a reason why Yahweh Shai's ministry started at 30 years of age. You know, and then also Yahweh Shai's biological father would be Joseph. All right. Even though he's the son of the heavenly father, all right, the spirit that was uh, uh, this the spirit of our Lord and Savior was the first begotten spirit of the Heavenly Father, and then also it was well known, all right, according to those that were in the know, all right, right around what time our Lord and Savior would come. So Yahweh Shai didn't just, you know, uh, um, this was disobedient to the Heavenly Father for eighty five percent of his life. All right, he wasn't disobedient for 85% of his life. All right, it just wasn't time yet because everything is measured by the Heavenly Father. Everything is designed to happen within, you know, it's, it's time, you know, and then once it happened, the Heavenly Father disposed of that and he brings forth the next event or the next thing to happen. So this dude is clearly going the hell off and he doesn't know anything. All right, just like all the rest of you Christians and Marvin Simple Ass and Jamal Bryant Simple Ass, 
You know, there's another video of this dude, you know, apologizing the most. The scriptures say, uh, 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 know ye not, uh, ye adulterers and adulteress, that the friendship of this world is enmity with the Heavenly Father. You know, so if you accept those things that they do and you don't rebuke it, that means that you're one of them. And I can see this dude being one of them, all right, in the closet. But hopefully this lesson was edifying. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone. And peace, love, salutations, and mercy be unto the whole for the elect. Shalom, Abad, Rabal, Krambakiyam. Shalom.